So, why'd I choose the Mark III Supra? Uh, oh man, let's see. Well, I've always been a huge fan of 80s, 80s uh, Japanese cars. Um, I love the, the boxy kind of body style and the old, the, the technology they put in the cars to make them seem futuristic, like Back to the Future. Um, and I guess the first time I saw a Mark III Supra, I had no idea what it was. Um, I actually thought it was a, a Camaro. Some people are going to be pissed off at me for saying that. But, uh, yeah, so when I first saw it, I was like, oh, man, this is this is the coolest car. And then I started reading up on it, and, it you know, it has has double wishbone front suspension and uh, lateral link rear suspension and this cool inline six that makes a, an amazing noise. And I guess uh, I guess it just seemed like kind of the perfect platform for uh, for a car to build. When I first bought the car, it was a bone stock, naturally aspirated uh, base model. No ABS, no steering assist, no suspension assist, nothing, right? So my the first thing that I wanted to do was brakes and suspension. Uh, I didn't really have any horsepower goals for the car. Um, I just wanted to do a stock turbo swap, or so I thought. Uh, and then I came across this uh, this built engine for such a good price and I was like you know what what the heck let's uh, let's make tons of power and here I'm at uh, 515 rear wheel horsepower <laughs> and it's a handful that's for sure So probably the biggest question I get asked is why did you build a 7M? Most guys are who want to make lots of horsepower, they swap it out with two JZs and do big singles, make tons of power. Well, I uh, first of all, the the motor that I stumbled upon was a 7M, so I figured why not try it. Uh, and I also was looking for 7Ms because I kind of wanted to keep the car, the heart of the car, true to the way Toyota originally designed it. Um, and I know a lot of people rag on 7Ms all the time for having rod knock issues and blowing head gaskets, but all those things have aftermarket support to fix those problems. So you do those upgrades and in my mind it's just as reliable as a, as a 1J or a 2J. Yeah, some of the things it's got done to it um, is uh, Eagle H-beam rods, uh, Wiseco 9.5 to 1, compression pistons. I went with a higher compression because I didn't want the car to be as doggy on the bottom end. Uh, makes it a little more peppy for driving around on the street, especially when you have a big turbo, because uh, some bigger turbos tend to take a lot of time to spool up. Um, so it still doesn't feel like it doesn't have any power when it's not in the boost. Uh, it's stage two cam, so BC 264s. Um, it's all um, titanium valve train, uh, shimless buckets, BC stage two retainers and valve springs. Um, it has uh, a GT3582, um, so it has a billet compressor wheel, uh, dual plane, um, and then I took the compressor housing and I anti surge ported the front of it. Engine management we're running. It's actually kind of a a new setup that uh, Portland Speed Industries did for me. We kind of worked together on, on designing this, uh, this setup. Um, they did a custom wiring harness and it's actually an AEM Honda box uh, that PSI actually opens up and adds a couple more drivers uh, for the injectors and uh, igniters. Um, and then it's a 1ZZFE coilover plug smart coil conversion. Definitely a big shout out to Jason over there working through that for about six months. It was a pain in all of our asses for sure. But 
the, the final product, the drivability of the AEM and being airspeed density, it's, uh, it's definitely an awesome driving car when it's done. Suspension, um, it's actually Kony adjustable struts uh, with H&R progressive lowering springs. Um, I have suspension techniques, sway bars, front and rear, uh, polyurethane sway bar mounts, full polyurethane suspension bushings, front and rear, uh, sway bar end links, um, and then I machined some custom uh, rear subframe locking collars uh, because when I got to about 500 horsepower, uh, you'd get into the boost and the back end would walk all over the place. This would be straight on the steering wheel trying to fight the subframe moving around so I just machined some uh, locking bushings that, that go into the, the, the center sleeve and then lock around the outside of the subframe and stop the subframe from shifting back and forth uh, and that's made a world of difference especially at the higher horsepower. Drilled and slotted rotors in the rear, slotted rotors in the front, full ceramic pads in all four corners. Um, and in the front, I've done the Cobra twin piston brake conversion, which is just a, a, a brake caliper, an aluminum brake caliper off of Mustang Cobra uh, with a 13 inch rotor. And it's just an adapter bracket and all you have to do is modify your, your dust shield. It's probably the best, the best uh, brake upgrade I ever did for the Mark III because everybody knows that the, the calipers on the Mark III are way inadequate for the weight of the car. The current exhaust that's on it's a big divorce three inch downpipe um, and then it's a drift motion three inch stainless steel exhaust all the way out the back. It's an electronic cutout valve so you just press the button and uh, it, it opens up a butterfly valve and then it's straight pipe right, right past the end of the downpipe. That's probably one of my favorite features. I did build some blast pipes for it, which is what I just had on the car. And I didn't really intend for it to do this, but when you'd get past about 4,000 RPM, uh, the, the pipes would, would howl with the resonation of the exhaust. Uh, and I just got, I got tired of being straight piped all the time. It was, it was way too freaking loud, which is why I went to the, the cutout valve. Getting the 500 horsepower has definitely been a long process, right? It's not, uh, it's not all like what the kids see in the YouTube videos nowadays, you know, people think that getting a thousand horsepower out of a car is a relatively easy thing. Uh, when then when you actually do it, it's not, <laughs> and it's very expensive. Um, when I when I got this car, when I first got the the performance engine in the car, I made about 400 horsepower wheel horsepower, um, and then I was at the I was pulling full boost at the top end of third gear, and I blew the head gasket. It broke right between the the water jacket. Um, in the very back of the cylinder head and six cylinder number six. So, uh, and then I had to rip the head off and, and do a, I ended up having to get another casting because of the electrolysis in the water jackets. It would ate away into the, into the ceiling surface for the cylinder walls and, um, and got all that sorted out. M and B cylinder heads up in North Portland actually did that work for me. Um, Brian's an amazing machinist definitely knows what he's doing when it comes to uh, when it comes to Japanese cars um, but once I got there uh, I was able to finally get the 500 horsepower uh, we actually made over uh, somewhere around 550 to 560 wheel horsepower and then I asked him to back it off because I'd rather have the car last longer than uh, than have lots of power out of it So this, uh, this beautiful Mark III Supra is actually for sale right now. Um, I don't really want to give it up, but I've got other projects and uh, 
bigger, bigger things to build. Um, so she's got to go if I want to finish the other project.